This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. half hour from right now let's talk about happy stuff with uh <laughs> steve kravitz happy right steve always 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 the pinnacle of uh of of optimism uh, that yeah that that's me yeah that's me yeah, that's... always living the high life <laughs> well how are you living in the post-covid uh, uh life here i like it I like it. It's it's actually feels a little strange to go in a store and not wear a mask. Yeah, yeah. Well, I most of the stores here are still requiring masks. Really? Yeah. Even though they go well, you know, if you at, at gyms now, I pass my gym, which I never go into, but I pass right. my gym. And, there you go. And uh, well, they only charge me fifteen bucks a month, so why should I go in? Anyway, uh, and they have a sign that says uh, no one will be admitted without a mask unless you can prove you've been vaccinated. Right, 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 right. So, you know, this idea that you go into a store here and you have to wear a mask uh, when you've been vaccinated is kind of counterproductive. Right, 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 Um, right. uh, And secondly, if you want people to get vaccinated, then make it. A, a real task if they're not for them to do stuff because they have to put masks on when they go into stores and they have to you know whatever but when, if you've been vaccinated give them a nice bonus and that is you don't have to wear a mask you know you, you're right. safe with other people don't worry about it you know and yeah I, but then they say there's that new strain that's coming along well, and well the new strain is not what they're talking about they, the new strain we're protected against the new strain right okay right, pretty right. much they figure uh, 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 here here was the statistic of all the people that died okay in right. oh the last uh, uh, little while 99.5 percent of them okay were not vaccinated is that right so what does that say Right, says everything, says volume. Yeah. So no matter about the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Delta variant and things like that, the fact is that uh, you know you're in pretty good shape. Yeah, I'm not worried. Yeah. Are you worried? Not really. You know, I mean, uh, I will still wear a mask when I'm in the subway. I'm going on a subway oh, yeah. today, and I'm going to wear a mask. And yeah. I, I wear the mask basically because I'm going to hold up a bank. But uh, no, I wear a mask. Uh, because uh, by, by the way, by the way, when people do go to hold up banks these days, do they take their mask off? I mean, right, right, yeah. right, right, right. I never understood sunglasses as a disguise. Uh, you know, I, I I somewhat understand it because you can change a person's appearance by not seeing their eyes. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I, if, you know, if you know someone and they're wearing sunglasses, you know who it is. See, like, do you know who I am now? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I, you can't see me because I can't see you. you know. Yeah, all right. all right. Thank you very much. Yeah, but uh, uh, so, I, you know, I mean, my feeling is um, that we are in a situation in which if you've been vaccinated, really, you should just be able to do anything you want to do. But you should be be able to prove it, and that's why they should have these passports, you know, these little identifications you can put on your phone, or you can show them the card that you've been vaccinated. Right. Um, those are a little less um, accurate because people are on, if you go online, they're selling those cards. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. But if you have to be okayed by the state, like I've got this little app here that I get from uh, New York State 
that uh, it's called my New York wallet. See there, look, look, see? Yeah. There it goes. It's my vaccination card. Right. But it has to go to the state because they look at your records. So this is far better than the uh, than the little cards they give you because you can buy those cards online and fill them out yourself and then say I've been uh, I've been vaccinated. So it, having something like that is important now in several yeah, states. My, my 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 vaccination card has stickers on it. Does it really? Yeah. Well, I I didn't get any stickers. What are they? With cartoon characters or? No 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 <laughs> just. Uh, sticker on where the date is. Yeah, well, mine they sign it, and then you know, I. I right. I, but anyway, this is a much better way of proving that you've been vaccinated. Right. You know. Right. Right. And right. a lot of states have banned these vaccination passports. Why I have no idea. You know, uh, they've turned this whole thing into a political issue. It's amazing. Right. Trump gave some kind of speech over the weekend and he was going about, you know, no vaccinations and and things like that. And I'm going, you know, great. I'm all for you telling a bunch of Republicans don't get vaccinated because they'll the all, thing is, they'll all the thing die. Is, you know? Trump is vaccinated. I think he is. Yes. Either that or he has the antibodies because he had COVID. Right. And he supposedly had a terrible case of COVID. Oh, really? But it didn't kill him, and they got him out of the hospital fast because they pumped him full of everything known to mankind. Right. In order to kill that thing. He got the kind of help we all wish we could get. Right. Okay. Right, right. Uh, and, uh, but I mean, it was terrible. It was just terrible. And he, but he, he, I think, says he, well, I'm immune because I have antibodies good and everybody but here he goes to this Republican convention the CPAC and he tells everybody oh you know uh, uh, they, they can't force you to do this you know it's your right not to do this if you don't want to do it. blah 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 okay right fine okay uh, but the fact is that what you're doing is you're saying to those people don't get vaccinated and it's fine with me because they're all Republicans and some of them will get COVID and some of them will die okay so what do you want to do? You want to ruin the people, the, the, the pool of people who will vote for you by right. telling them right. not to get, you know, you should want them to all have the shots and be healthy so they can vote for you. I just wish Trump would just go away. Well, he's not going to. His ego no. won't let him. There's some new books out now, a couple of them, about the last days of Trump in the White House. And oh that, really? That literally his staff considered him insane, literally incapable of rational thought. Uh, you know, and uh, and a rational hairdo. I read this one interview that he did with a reporter, a guy named Wolf, I think, who he said to him that he was uh, who was the guy he put on the Supreme Court. I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, that he was very disappointed in him because he didn't stand up for him in the Supreme Court. I'm sorry, you know he's in the Supreme Court. He's got to he's got to play it as he sees it. You know that's right. You can't that's be right. disappointed because you gave the he says and I gave this guy a job. You know, like like it's a Trump, Trump, Trump's a fucking idiot. I mean, just well, he's uh, he's a delusional idiot. Yeah. Know? I mean, his, and the banks are all cl uh, calling in their loans, and there's criminal charges, and let's see what happens. Well, there are no criminal charges. Uh, there's nothing against him. The company, his company, Trump, right. whatever, Trump, 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 uh, has is being charged, I think, with malfeasance of doing business in the state of New York. And, really? Uh, yeah, and of course the the head of the finances and so on has literally been charged with fraud or whatever. So, you know, we got and and Trump's company, true to their fashion of really standing behind him, uh, m made a big deal out of it and said, uh, uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna uh, uh, fire this guy because he's been indicted. He's been with right. the company for 30 years, and they're going to fire him because he's been indicted. They don't even stand by him. You know? Well, I like that. I mean, I'm not against not standing by him. Yeah. I mean, like, 
Why are we still talking about him? I, I have no idea, to be honest with you. you that's, that's the worst part, is we're still talking. He's still relevant. Yeah, yeah. You know, because he's irrelevant. Well, he, he's not really relevant, you know. Uh, and and I, I but he but he still he gets all the all the all the juice you know so he, he, he commands you know that he gets covered yeah yeah you know so I, I mean, when he does something all the networks cover it yeah all the national co you know news they well they I'll tell you, uh, MSNBC doesn't cover him. I mean, he was giving the speech to CPAC, and they said, we'll go back to him if he says anything new. Right, you know, right, or, right, right. Or important, or that isn't a lie. Right. You know, I mean, he's been perpetrating this big lie for the yes. longest time about the election being stolen from him. It he still believes that. It was wrested from him, but it wasn't stolen. No, but it, 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 he still believes that he won the election. Uh, yes, um, but we all know that he did. Right. So fuck him. Right. You know. It's it's right there in black and white. Uh, you you know, lost. You know, there's a certain there's a certain dignity in admitting you lost and then moving on. Right. You know, and uh, uh, and step down gracefully. But if I if I if I don't get admitted to the broadcasters hall of fame, I'm going to ask for a recount. <laughs> and, oh yeah, you're up for that. Yeah, I and mean, I'm going to say it was a fraud. You know, I, I, that I won it, and there was a fraud uh, being played. When, when's the when is the award ceremony? Oh, it's in I don't know November, or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's cool. Is this the first time you've been nominated? Is it the first time? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I didn't know how it works. I didn't know how it works. You know. Yeah, different different Hall of Fames operate differently. Well, I mean, it's like a it's a contest, okay. Right. You know, I mean, I've been nominated uh, for the Hall of Fame, which is in itself. I mean, I hate to say it because it sounds so trite. You know, it's an honor just to be nominated. You know, it is. Um, it is. But it's better to win. <laughs> it's much better do, to do win. I sound, do I sound, uh, folks? Do I sound like I'm being something here wrong? You know? Well, no, it's a happy show. It's better to win. It's better to win. Uh, so Write yeah. that down, boys and girls. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm up against three other people. I'm up against, right. uh, I'm up against, um, um, this is a guy in California. I'm trying to remember his name now. He's a talk show host. Uh, I forgot all these things. I, I don't really remember them. Uh, right. But he's a black talk show host who's a right, rabid right winger, and uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I know. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know his name offhand, but I know exactly who you're talking about. Now there's a there's a there's an audience vote where where people can go and vote for who they want to see put in the Hall of Fame. Oh really? Yeah, but it only counts as one twenty fifth. The other twenty four votes are from the board of nominees okay the nomination board so right. so so you you know you could not have the the audience vote and you know the uh, the regular the you know the vote of the nominee now let me ask you this can you all get in no only one only one well, that sucks whoever wins well of course it, it sucks from this standpoint you got a hall of fame right Right. If you're going to have a Hall of Fame, then you just say, hey, by the way, the inductees this year are blah, 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 right. blah, 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 and blah, blah, right. blah. You know, uh, that's what they do with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Okay, and I think most other Hall of Fames, they don't hold a contest either. No, they do it the same way. Yeah, they, they, they all get together, the nominating committee, and they say, okay, I think, uh, you know, um, Elton John should get a, in the Rock and Roll right. Hall of Fame this year. And so and so, you know, they put about five people in there every year. And they should do the same thing with this. They right. say, "Oh, Alex Bennett's had a lifetime. Maybe he should be installed in the Hall of Fame this year." And That's maybe, right. And here are three. Uh, right. Here are four other, five other people that should be. Right. And then they also have um, uh, uh, categories which I'm not in. I'm in spoken word. 
but they have active uh, and current. In other words, a a a cur th these are people currently are on the air, and there are f four categories of that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. The talk show host out of L.A., is that Larry Elders? Yeah, Elders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Why do I know that? I have no idea. Probably because you have no life. <laughs> uh, uh, but he, 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 you know, the trouble is that because you have this audience vote, which they say the nominating committee sometimes looks at the audience vote to see, consider their right. opinion. Okay. Uh, these, these, there are two people who are on the air currently, Elder and uh, these two guys from Philadelphia who I've never heard of in my life and neither has anybody else. But apparently they've been on the air there for 20 years. Really? Yeah. But anyway, uh, elders can't plug it on his show, go out and vote for me, because he's not going to have a show. And the reason he's not going to have a show is he decided to run for governor of California. Oh, is that right? Put his hat in the ring in that uh, recall thing. So if you're running for office, you can't have a radio show. At least you can't have a radio show because then the, the outfit that runs your radio show is incumbent upon them to give everybody else equal time right, to you. Right, 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 right. Which means right. they'd have to give equal time at this point to over 60 people. Right. Right? So uh, I don't think he can plug it on his show. Uh, the only other one that I think I'm really up against is Sally Jesse Raphael. And I really? know I know Sally for years. I mean, I, I, we used to work together. Right. And uh, I, you know, if I wish that anybody win but me, it's her. Right. Okay. okay. In fact, maybe more so than me. Because I like her, and she's had a lifetime of being in this business, and she's very deserving of it. Right. You know, okay. as am I. But, uh, but absolutely. But I would have to say that uh, I would. Uh, she's older than I am. I've still got a chance to be nominated several more times in the coming years. You That's know? right. She, less so. She's like 86, something like that, 86. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And and I just would like to see her get it before she goes off to her just reward. You know? Right. So, I, I, in a way, I'm pulling for her. It's I know it's strange, but I'm pulling for her. Uh, but if she doesn't win it, then I should. If those other two guys, two people win it, I think it's wrong. You know, okay. I don't think Larry Elder's contributed anything to this business over the years. And I don't know what these other two guys have ever done, so obviously their contributions haven't been that huge. Right. You know. Minimal at best. Well, you know, I don't know who they are. They're probably two really nice guys. Maybe they do deserve it. I don't know. But where they came from, I have no idea. I expected there would be two of three other people there that I had heard of. Right, okay. right, right, right. But I went, Elder, yeah, uh huh, Sally Jesse, uh huh. These guys, who are they? Right. Where they come from? And then I've asked everybody, where are they? Who are they? And nobody seems to know. You can't uh, Google them. Oh, I've Googled them. They've been on for twenty years at WMR in uh, in Philadelphia. Which I think, you know, is a long period of time, but I don't know if that qualifies you for the uh, Hall of Fame. Right. But, but getting back to what I was saying is that it really should be for a lifetime of work. Right. And, and I don't think there's a posthumous category. I don't believe, I didn't see, there was, they didn't say they were putting anybody in posthumously. But there well, were a did lot they of, send you a notification? Yeah, they sent me a letter, yeah. Uh, notifying me that I and I got a call the night before from one of the members of the board, the nomination board, who right. said, "Here, I'm going to send you this letter because they told me to send you the letter. Uh, don't mention it to anybody till the twelfth that you've been nominated for, you know, right? The award, the uh, induction into the Hall of Fame. But I just think it's the kind of thing you don't hold a contest. What you do is you get together and you decide this year, Sally Jesse Raphael is going to be the." the recipient or Alex Bennett's going to be the recipient but you don't sit around going and these are the four people five four people who are up for it now everybody vote yeah yeah it, it, 
I agree that, with you. If you get nominated, that should mean you're in. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, if, <clears throat> if I uh, don't, you know, get it, I, I you know, I'm not going to be disappointed. I'd be disappointed if it were Larry Elder or these two guys in Philadelphia, but if it was Sally Jesse, I'd be happy for her. You know? Well, well. You know, she, she was an okay lady when I knew her. And, right, uh, right, right. I'm sure she continued to be okay. Yeah. But I became good friends with, well, there was a guy who was a, he actually was the doorman at WMCA when I was, when I was starting out uh, here in New York. And uh, he uh, he became her producer, and then I got to meet him again at uh, uh, at, at uh, Sirius XM, where he started working, putting together the Doctor Channel and so on, and, right. and uh, Maurice Tunick, and uh, he worked with her producing that show for years, the TV show. And um, what does a producer actually do? He does a lot, really. If you're a real producer. If you're an executive producer, you don't do anything. It's an honorary credit. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, some executive producers do take hold of the situation, and, you know, but, but right. very, very seldom. Anyway, so um, uh, uh, he, uh, he, and he never spoke badly about her. You know, we always talked very positively about her. Right. So, you know, I mean, she, I've always liked her, always liked her, and... Uh, Am I being magnanimous by saying I hope she wins? Deep down, I hope I win. But you of course, know, yeah, of course, you should hope you win. But if if it isn't me, then it better be her. You know? Wow. I wouldn't. I would I would. I would be. If I got nominated for something like that, I would be confident I was in. Well, I look. Uh, you know, but that's uh, just setting yourself up to be well, disappointed. Well, there are two parts to this. You know, number one, yeah, I deserve it. I've I've had a lifetime in this business. I've right. contributed to it. I've changed it by doing right. certain things that other people then did. Right. Okay, so I, I'm, I, you know, I changed the structure of morning shows across the entire country by having comics on. Nobody did that before I did it. And an audience. Yeah. Uh, I, I forget, forgot to mention on my biography that I had a studio audience. But right. forget about that. That was a function of having comics on because then they had somebody to play to. Okay. Right. Right. But the fact was that every other show in America started book, them booking comics. They Nobody booked comics before I did. You know. Right. So right. I, I changed the business that way. I changed the business years ago when... I was the first guy to start interviewing rock artists. Oh, really? Yeah, when I would call up record companies and say, I would like your rock artist, this rock artist, or that. do you have any rock artists we can have on? They went, you want to interview one of our rock artists? Because right. nobody was doing it. Really? You know? Yeah. So, I mean, I think I have changed the business. Okay. You know, through, my, through my actions. Uh, I don't think Larry Elder has. And I, right. I, I've never heard of these other two guys, neither have they. Uh, right. Sally was a woman working in this profession early on, so for that I think she gets some points. You know. But you're get... right about the comics and the, and, the, and the, doing the radio, because when you would do a gig in any city, you'd have to do their morning talk That's show. That's correct. But, the, but before I started doing it, they wouldn't even book you on that show. Right, right. And sometimes you get on the, like, the um, good morning... I don't know, Amherst. One of the multitudes of morning zoos. Right. Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. It's a morning zoo. Hey, we're having fun. Honk, honk. You know, sound effects. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, your, your show was unique. It was unique in many, you know, yeah. the live audience, but the anyway, back and forth. I, 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 looking back on a lifetime of work, I didn't just do the common things everybody else was doing. I always tried to bend the medium, change it, move it in different right. directions and things like that. And uh, because of that, uh, I think, you know, I deserve it. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even denying that I don't deserve it. But am I as well known as Sally Jesse? Not really. Am I as well known maybe as Larry Elder because he's currently on the air? I don't know. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of people are very fond, have very fond memories of Alex Bennett in New York, very fond memories of Alex Bennett in San Francisco. That's, oh, yeah. per that's pretty much it. You know? 
So, well, those are some pretty big markets, well, San Francisco you, and in New York. Yeah, but I never went syndicated. I never got all over the country. Right. And then everybody would have known who I was. Right. You know, I was a local radio star. Right. And there was nothing wrong with that. But in no. those days, most people were local radio stars and syndication was something new. And now right. it's the only thing you want. You know, you want to be right. syndicated. So, you know, and so uh, who knows? Hopefully. Did you have the opportunity to be syndicated? Yes. Yeah. But I, and, you, and you said no? I, well, it went along with the job I had to take and then I would have had to leave San Francisco and I felt guilty about that walking out okay. of the contract. But uh, I would have worked for the guy who made uh, Howard Stern a star. Oh, really? And, and he would have put me out across the country, syndicated. Right. Uh, but I didn't take it. So, what the hell? You know, what a was it, the, was it the show you were doing in San Francisco that they no. were going to syndicate? No. No, I had to go to Washington, D.C. to do it. Oh, i got to turn this off. That's my, uh, that's my uh, the phone ringing. I, well, anyway, I gotta go. We've run out yeah, of time. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's my business manager telling me I gotta go. Uh, Hi. Anyway, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it once again, thank Steve you, Alex. Kravitz. We'll talk again next week. Yeah, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Kravitz. Bye, Stephen. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, and there was uh, Stephen Kravitz. I'm a little out of sync here. Uh, part of the problem being that uh, we don't know what the problem is. We have never been able to figure out this sync problem. But as soon as we go to the um, um, citizen panel, of which there's only one person waiting right now, uh, I will probably be in sync, okay? So why don't we why don't we go to that? Let me see here. See if I go to just me on the Zoom, you can see that I'm in sync for the most part. Okay? All right. Anyway, let me admit the only person waiting to go on, and that's Vernon Nunn. Uh, boy, it's getting it's getting dismal, Vernon. I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. You know, I may just have to say it, it ain't worth even turning the, the power on here, you know. But it, it yep. but certainly it's wonderful to have you here, and thank you for being here, and I appreciate it. Okay? Day, uh, two more days in paradise, then i got to head back to Kentucky. Then you got to go back to Kentucky. Oh, well. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Um, that would be nice. You know, it's not. You don't hate Kentucky, do you, or do you? No. How no I like it there. You, if, were you born and raised in Kentucky? Okay, here comes. Uh, yes. Uh, you were born and raised in Kentucky, so it's it's kind of your yes. home state, right? Exactly. Yeah. I only lived I only lived uh, outside of the state for about three and a half years. Yeah. So I mean, how bad can you really hate it? You so know, if you were born and raised there. Yeah. Um, I, I happen to live in a county that is wait, wait, wait. leans hold, hold the on same. Hold leans, on a second. Leans Some, the same direction I do. Somebody has their audio on. Um, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. That's Jeff. It's probably Jeff. Yeah. No. There. Oh, like, well, no. You were born Are you? Have you got your browser open, Jeff? Yes. Uh, you were born and raised. Oh, well. Yep, well that was him. It was definitely <laughs> him. Yeah, no question about that. Anyway. Well, why is there nobody here? I don't know. That's why I may stop doing this altogether. Yeah. You know, I mean, why should I do this? You know, I mean, if we don't get a decent number of people to call. Well, it's not just that... 8 o'clock. So what? At least... It's just 8 o'clock here in California. So yeah. you got to give a couple people time to wake up. Yeah, well, I, I you know, it, it, it just, yeah. it's getting to frustrate me, okay? Uh, I, I begin to wonder why why do I go to all this trouble? I mean, I do it because certain people like Vernon enjoy being on the show. You enjoy being on the show. And right. I would hate to stop it for that reason. But, you know, I find that, for instance, my, uh, my show on uh, 
uh, Mondays gets a much better response than this show. Well, that's because people are awake. <laughs> well, I well, I mean, people are awake in California right now. It's eight, only eight o'clock in California. Right. right. You know, well, I mean, I, I think uh, John Larkin. It's only eight o'clock for him. However, in Kentucky, thank you, Vernon. Uh, Vernon, I, I, I thank you very much for staying up this late so you can participate. You what know? is that's it? right. It's, it's e we're on Eastern East Coast time. Oh, yeah. eleven yeah. o'clock. Wow. Yep. 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 So. Hello, John Larkin. How are you? Haven't seen you in a little bit. You've been out uh, working? Yeah, working and shooting pool. And shooting pool. That's yeah. more important than getting on Alex's show. I don't understand that. Oh, shoot, <laughs> shooting pool? Well, wait well, a I'm minute. In a pool, I'm in a pool league, you know? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And, and do you play for money or what? what's the story? No, it's, it's just, you know, a league. We, mm -hmm. You know, we play a bunch of different bars in the city. Yeah. 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 It's fun. Yeah, so uh, so uh, you know, I never, I, I did I ever play pool? I mean, I, I think I tried once, you know, but it just didn't didn't grab me, you know, yeah. as a as a pursuit. I'm I, not, not not much of a person in the competitive stuff. Yeah, in the eighties and nineties, I was really into playing pool. I bought a pool table. It's sitting in my living room collecting dust. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so you see, I yeah. I mean, I, I, to say that I'm not competitive is, is I guess wrong because I was in broadcasting and I did radio shows and I had to get ratings and get better ratings than the next guy. So I guess I was kind of in a form of competition there. So yeah. you never played any sports or anything like that or? No, not really. I swam a little bit in high school. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I turned out to be the towel boy for the swimming team. It was, <laughs> it was I, you know, uh, I was going to say that I filled the pool with water. That was my job. And uh, The towel boy, huh? Yeah. But, I, you know, I, um, by the way, I just wanted to say something here. The reason why we've been playing reruns of, um, of, uh, Steve Kravitz. It's because number one, my conversations with him I think are terrific. I really enjoy them and I've liked them and I want to keep him on this program. What happened was he disappeared for about a week. And finally I found out what happened to him and I'm not going to say what happened to him. That's private to him. But he will be coming back on soon. So in the meantime, I'll just play reruns of him whenever I need to fill the time. Well, I hope he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Yeah, he is okay. I know okay. you were concerned. I was very concerned because when right. you don't hear from somebody for like a week and a half, right. who you're used to hearing from all the time, you know. All right. Uh, well, as long as he's okay, that's yeah, all. Yeah, he's knows. okay. He's he's all right. A uh, little bit a little bit of problems here and there, but if he wants to talk about it, fine. But I'm not going to uh, talk about it for him. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I just want everybody to know that he's okay, and uh, that that was important. Uh, so anyway, uh, J uh, um, uh, Alan, anything you want to talk about? No, I I have, actually haven't even heard the news today. Um, the only thing I saw was an email uh, from the AMA, the American Medical Association, that uh, the CDC approved. Uh, Moderna and uh, Johnson and Johnson for boosters, and they also approved if people got the Johnson and Johnson, you can get one shot of Moderna or Pfizer mm -hmm. and do better than a second shot of of uh, just Johnson and. Well, Johnson. I think we found out that Johnson and Johnson really was meant to be a two shot deal. Yep. I think you're right. And, and they just kind of tried to get it through as a one-shot deal, figuring that, oh, a lot more people will get Johnson & Johnson. But now everybody's got Johnson & Johnson has to go out and get a second one. And they also say you can mix and match. If you, well, got, Johnson and yeah. if you got Johnson & Johnson, you can go the, get Moderna. The numbers, this will come Pfizer. out tomorrow or the next day. The numbers for the mix and match are, you know, like three or 400 people. It's not a lot of people. And so they're assuming that you'll be able to mix and match without a problem. Yeah. Uh, the only people that are going to mix and match really 
that would make a difference in the people that got their first shot at Johnson and Johnson. Mm-hmm. So it'll come out in the next couple of days. I'm sure that uh, they don't want you know if you got a Pfizer and you can get a Pfizer, get one. But if you're somewhere where all they have is Moderna, get the Moderna for a booster. They they would prefer you to get what you originally got. If and you know a mm-hmm. Moderna or a Johnson, you can you can get whatever you want. Look who and look, until they yeah. get it in a few million arms, they're not going to know what the side effects are, if any. Yeah, I doubt if there are any. You know. What do, what do I know? I'm not a... Uh, Phil, what are you doing here tonight? <laughs> uh, I figured I'd be in a, another body. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. He came to defend Steve Bannon. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, Good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, Another low-hanging piece of fruit. Trump will uh, uh, summarily dismiss and say... Up, oh, you're going to jail. Enjoy your time there. I'm not coming with you. Yeah, yeah, yes, John. Hey, did did you hear Trump got a a, a new social network in sight? Wow. Uh, and he's he's valuing it at 1.7 billion. Wow. And What's this? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 75 million. Eight no, 1.7 billion. I read. He said. It's called Truth and something. Yeah. He says it's worth 1.7 billion. Immediately out of the out of it doesn't even yeah. have to have a, a, anybody who belongs to it yet, right? Yeah. So, so, and it's like a uh, it's like a public it, domain. If, if Trump went on Shark Tank, they'd say the valuation was a little high. <laughs> so is Westchester? Like, did he Westchester buy MySpace County. or something? What'd you say? No, it's like. Um, it's like a public domain version of Twitter that anybody can use, oh, and so he just he just you know put a name on it and put it out there. There's okay. nothing to it. Does it it's already like, does it already exist? And he just put his name yeah. on it. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, it's, okay. it's it's like a um, public domain version of Twitter that anybody can set up their own Twitter. Oh, anybody can do that. Gee, we're all doing this now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's playing with their buddy. I don't need it I, I, because I got my I got my shot here, so I'm okay. So. All right. But, um, uh, yeah, what was it? Uh, you know, uh, I'm so happy uh, that uh, they finally found this guy Laundry's body in various chomped up alligator parts. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, down in Florida because, thank God, that should be the end of the story. I am oh. so sick of that story. Huh? Audrey says no ticky, no shirty. Yeah, right. But uh, no, apparently, apparently that was him. They, found, you know, they found his uh, backpack or something with a, a notebook. We'd love to know what's in the notebook. And uh, you know, is this the guy that killed his wife and they were looking no, for no, him? No, or no, no. His his girlfriend. His, his girlfriend. His, his girlfriend. fiance. Yeah. Yeah, Gabby Petito. Yeah. Yeah, Gabby but, Potato. But okay. you know, this is one of those stories. I don't know how you feel about it, Vernon. But this is one of those stories. It just got way too much play. You well, know, you know why? Well, because you she's, know why it got because so she's much play. two two reasons. She's she's yeah. cute, why yeah. right? And the white. other reason, well, cute and white all fall in the same category. And the other one is, and this is very important. They had, they had vi- video. They had video. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They, video. They, they didn't have all that video. They wouldn't even be paying attention to just be another woman who got off by her boyfriend in the mountains somewhere, you know. Yeah. So they found her, right? Yeah. 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 They also found five other bodies, uh, not related to, uh, I believe, the uh, thing in the alligator. But these five bodies were missing people. Where in in the in that same area? Oh, really? Well, those alligators were hungry. No, no, no. So they found her out in the, out west. Yes. Well, they found her up in the mountains in Wyoming, was it, I think? Like, yeah. yeah. Like that. Yeah. Colorado, Wyoming. Yeah. Or yeah. I mean, you know, something went on there, you know. Uh, and, well, of course, something went on there. Lover's Triangle that, or something that didn't work out real well. Well, no. I th- uh, what? If he would have killed her in Yellowstone National Park, he could have got away with murder. Why because there's a, part, there's a part of Yellowstone National Park that has no jurisdiction, so there, there'd be nowhere to try him. 
so he couldn't get a trial. So technically, it's called the dead zone. Okay, so, so what you're saying is to everybody who's listening, if you want to kill off your wife or somebody like that, just go out to uh, Yellowstone yeah. and find out where the dead zone is. Yeah, it's on the yeah, border the, of Idaho and Wyoming. Yeah, the, the trouble with that, John, is Yellowstone is a federal park. So it's I know, federal I know. land. No, I, look, I'm not going to murder anybody there and take the chances. But <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I'm telling you. People, okay, I've never heard that. Well, you've always not. seemed a little strange to me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I can't figure that one out. Who <laughs> disappeared? Where did Vernon go? Where Vernon went somewhere. He'll be back, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, he's, up, he's up in the mountains, and so I think he probably has some kind of problems that way. Um, but anyway, anybody else want to call tonight? You know? I love all these people who, uh, who, who talk on, who write me notes and say th nasty things about people like Phil and so on, and yet they, they never call the show themselves, all right, uh, which is a kind of... Strange. They're low-hanging fruit. Who yeah. cares? Yeah, 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 right. Here we go. Yeah. Vernon's back here. Let me just let him in. Okay, there he goes. Um, but... Um, uh, I, I don't know. I haven't been watching the news that much either. Uh, and I'm, uh, but did did I hear something right or wrong here, Vernon? That what Medicare is thinking of giving dental. Yeah, they, that that's one of the things in the Build Back Better plan. It's my understanding that uh, they wanted to not have to go through a Medicare Advantage program. You know, these Medicare Advantage insurance companies will offer that, but you have to sign up for their Medicare Advantage plan in order to get it. Now, the Medicare Advantage plans are the cheaper of the two plans. You can get that or you can get the supplemental, right? But, but the advantage, for some reason, even though you pay a fortune for the supplemental, the advantage does give you some dental and does give you uh, hearing aids, I think. And vision. Yep. And, and vision. Yeah, I just well, read my my roommate's thing. I got the couple so, of years. So before. why why are we paying three hundred dollars a month for? Because uh, you don't have Kaiser, which is the biggest uh, Advantage Plus group in the country. No, no I think Humana is a big one too. Yeah, no, it? but but but, but but wait a minute. It, supposedly the it, the Advantage plans are not as good as the oh, supplemental. Okay. The supplemental was supplemental. I this year have not paid a penny. I don't wow. have any. And neither have I. Yeah. You, neither it, neither it, have I. And I've got I've got a, a secondary insurance. Medicare is my primary, and we have other insurance that's as your as your supplemental. Yeah. Right. Do you do? But you do the supplemental. You don't do the advantage for your secondary. No. Right. You wealthy folks can have. Well, no, that. it isn't that. I got a I got a wife who works, and her company is paying for it. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Well, you know. When she leaves that job, I'm going to have to take her to Wyoming or Yellowstone. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah. He's just joking, everybody. Yeah. So, Phil, what brings you here tonight? You just felt like uh, you saw me floundering in the wind, and you wanted to add to the. Uh... I think I, you know, put another face on the board, and uh, yeah. uh, I don't know how much I'll contribute, but. Uh... Well, you never contribute anything, but. Nevertheless, it's always a pleasure to have you here. He didn't want it to be just you and me, Alex. That's what it was. But yeah, if it were just you and me, this would be like... Uh, be, be. I didn't tune in until uh, the, you had a couple morons. Yeah. Not a couple of morons? Who's a couple, a couple of morons? Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever happened to that guy... Uh, from New Jersey, it looks like Shaq or Shrek. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh uh, what was that guy's name? He got all pushed out of shape. Well, that's what happened. He got all pushed out of shape, and we haven't Robert seen him since. Robert Natale. Robert. Robert yeah, Natale. Robert Natale. Yeah, we don't know what happened to him. Federal uh, authorities? Huh? Probably got picked up by the feds. Yeah, prob <laughs> probably. No, he 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 just got all pissy one one night. He just for some reason I felt he got pissy unnecessarily. It was just it, got it was pissy good. with Phil unnecessarily. Yeah, he was a bully, and uh, yep. yeah, I stood up to him, and he didn't like that. And uh, you know that's what happens. Didn't with he get mad at me because I defended you? Right? Yep. I didn't defend you, but I defended your right to say what you say. Yep. 
Bill afterwards, and I never mentioned his name. I, I didn't think it was the right thing to do uh, to talk about him, although yeah. time uh, but yeah, the guy was a bully, and and I and I think he's been indoctrinated to a lot of those things that they teach you in school. Mm-hmm. That the teachers are doing that critical race theory, and, and <laughs> maybe, maybe he went to uh, he li- he doesn't live in a big city in New Jersey. Let me ask somebody so, who would know. He went Vernon, to S, Vernon, you know, one of those. Vernon, uh, yes. Vernon, what yes. exactly is critical race theory? I have never had it explained properly to me. I, I think it is a misnomer the way it's being used. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, calling it critical race theory is yeah. is really uh, not factual. What the Republicans are calling critical race theory is mm-hmm. any discussion about uh, how this country started out with uh, slavery, et cetera, yeah. and how and and how how the oh, okay. history of this country ended up like it did with the Civil War, et cetera. You know, you'll find people right now who think that the Civil War was not about slavery; it was about states' rights. But that's bullshit. Yep. Well, I could argue this and see if you agree or don't disagree with me on that Lincoln did do, uh, did, did uh, emancipate the slaves as an economic sanction against the South. Somewhat, yes. Yeah, and that it was an economic sanction. People say, oh, he's the great emancipator. Well, he really, he's kind of the, the guy who kind of wanted to, you know, take the, the South and give, take, take them into an economic disadvantage. Okay. Now, well, granted, you know, granted, to have an advantage economically because your labor is free. Yeah. Okay. All you have to do is yeah. feed them and put some shoes on their feet. Uh, is 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 uh, you know is not a is not a way to run an economy. But nevertheless, they lived on that economy. That was very important to their economy and. The whole war was fought for economic reasons. If you don't, most things are fought for economic reasons. Yeah. Yeah, but what yeah. really, what the real, the real trigger was about the Civil War, what the real trigger was, was not necessarily the states in the South that had slavery at the time. It was the United States expanding towards the West, and which states were going to have slavery and which states were not going to be allowed to have slavery was the trigger. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. How many states do you think, we kept slavery, how many states do you think of the other states that have become states so far, would you think would become slave states? 50. Um, Missouri for sure, and and Texas probably, Oklahoma probably. How about, how about uh, uh, Arizona or uh, New I'm Mexico? I'm not so sure about Arizona, New Mexico. Wyoming, Colorado. I'm not sure the they whole would've. the whole West Coast wouldn't have been that way. I want, yeah. want these uh, uh, illegal aliens to come over. They're looking for cheap labor. There's They're, no such thing as an illegal alien. There's no such thing as an illegal person. As woke as you want. The, these guys no, are. Wait, are, wait, 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 Phil, Phil. Before you go further, I want. Vernon, explain that when you say to him that there is no such thing as an illegal alien. Okay, what he's talking about are people who come over who are undocumented. There's a difference between being undocumented and being illegal. Okay, it's illegal for me to go out and commit murder. That's illegal. Mm -hmm. But it's not illegal for me to exist as a human being. No, but Vernon, is it illegal for someone to come into this country uh, without going through the proper uh, channels and procedures? Yes. Yes. So, therefore, they're illegal. Yes, it's legal. They are legal. they are illegally in in this country. Well, we just lost Vernon again. Mm. But ah. you know, that's the minutia of it. What my statement was was the fact that so many people want cheap labor. They want them. And that's that's the companies. The companies should be punished who are hiring these people. Arms. It's all uh, the look, uh, look, Phil. Phil, I. Uh, 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 on this cheap yeah. labor just what you were talking about with the civil war and the fact that the south wanted this cheap labor 
it's happening here. So you asked the question, how many states want slavery? And I said 50. And the reason I said 50 is because that's what they're trying to do. That's why that's, they're all That's of, not my understanding of the question. The question was how many of these other states that were later added to the union would probably have had slavery legal. Right. Well, I, 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 hold, hold on a second. Uh, 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 well, by by that logic, you would have to say, well, how, how many Africans were coming from Africa in the 1800s trying to get in here to be slaves? You know, those people are coming to cross the border for a better a better life. The, the Europeans came over as indentured servants and worked for seven years uh, to, to learn a trade and then to have their freedom. And their uh, servitude was paid by people that used them as basically slaves. Uh, I agree with you there. That's true. And so this, this was a, a type of thing that's been used uh, all along. So, but, wait, wait a minute. Are you standing up for slavery? No. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, are you standing up for uh, people not wanting to come to this country? I mean, I would suggest they don't come to this country, but, you know. Yeah. There, was a, there was an essay by Emerson on compensation, and what, what he talked about is that mankind needs to be compensated for their work to, to, to make them whole. Now, I'm not a bigot, and I don't care what somebody's color mm -hmm. is. I just believe that people should be compensated well, for what they do. Well, and I... Okay, well, thank you well, all very you... much for being on our show tonight because uh, I'm not being compensated. So that's it for tonight, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Phil, what do you think about what's going on in Texas right now? And, uh, there's a lot going on in Texas. In okay, what about the gerrymandering? What do you think about the gerrymandering? It's been gerrymandering for years. Okay, well, Texas gets two more representatives from this last census. Guess what? 95% of the population increase that allowed them to get two more districts were people of color. But guess what? The two extra districts that Texas has gerrymandered into existence are going to be more white people. Well, you know, a lot of people from California are moving to Texas because they want to get out of California. Uh, that's, that's changing the subject. I'm just saying, yeah, Texas the has subject. an increase in population. And 95% of that increase oh, has right. been people well, of Phil, color. Hold it. But so. they're not being represented in this in this uh, current redistricting that's going on in Texas. California has lost one seat. In that's that. irrelevant. That's irrelevant. That doesn't give Texas the right to do what they're doing. Finish what I'm saying. So be, because they've lo uh, there's a couple of states where people from California are moving, and Texas is one of them. And so there's a lot of population that have left California. And th this is, th I don't know if it's white or black or green, but the, the bottom line is California has lost a representative. You're telling me Texas has picked up two, and I can see why, because people are moving from California and they're going to Texas. No, they're not. Oh yes, they no, are. They're not. There are some. There are they're some. They're, are they're some. going to us. Not, they're going to. That does that does not justify Texas giving two more representative, creating two more representative districts that are not representative of the increase in population. Vernon, uh, California Phil, lost. Phil, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me just jump in here. Um, I've, I've been having a fight lately with with Marjorie about something because she's always watching MSNBC and she's always yelling at the screen. They're trying to rob the vote from us, and I look at her and I say, "Your rob was voted. Your 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 vote was robbed from you years ago." You know, I can't say that there's probably ever been a time in the history of this country where elections have been totally, totally, not rigged in some areas. You know, I said you ask a black person about whether they've been represented in the electorate. And they'll say, no, they never have been. I said, so to say that, oh, well, we're losing our, our right to vote, some people never had it to begin with. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We're supposed to be forming a more perfect union. That's yeah. been our goal in this yeah. country, yeah. is to form a more perfect union. We're never going to get it perfect. But to form a more perfect re union means that every person should be allowed to vote. And every person should be represented in the Congress. That's every citizen. 
Well, Every we didn't, we didn't person. say we didn't say the census. Anyone. The census doesn't say anything about citizenship, Phil. Yeah, the and the census is what determines the districts, but they not tr- the citizenship. Vernon, they tried to ask about citizenship, and they took that question out. You remember? That's because it was illegal. That's because yeah. it was unconstitutional. But, but, but yeah, Phil, I think I think what Vernon is trying to say, Phil, is that. Uh, uh, boy, I'm 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 kind of out of it right now. Uh, is that you're, 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 to be represented is very important. And a lot of people are not going to be represented in Texas. That's it, plain and simple. And they're also, your guys, the Republicans, are trying to stop decent ability to get out and vote. I mean, what's wrong? What's wrong with being able to mail in to vote? Uh, I mail in my vote. It's called an absentee ballot, but I uh, have received a request. Uh, I sent in a request based on uh, my voter registration, and therefore it's not just a bunch of ballots that can be dumped under a table. Well, that's not happening. That's all just that's all bullshit, too. That's nonsense. You know, show me it's where that not- happened, Phil. Nonsense. Yeah, show me the evidence. The only uh-huh. time the only time they actually tried to find out if that happened or not was in Arizona, and they actually found out Biden got more votes than he originally looked like. Yeah, because those are the votes that they were dumping. Not true, <laughs> and you know that. This you was the, this was the Trump this was the Trump backed audit that said that Phil. Yes, and if if you have a bunch of votes that only had one candidate on the on the on the uh, ballot, and all the other candidates were left blank, uh, wouldn't you think that those votes might be a little... Phil, show Phil, me a single Phil, ballot Phil, where that was you the know, case, Phil. You, show you, me one look, ballot. Please. Show me one ballot in Phil, Arizona Phil, where you can be case. stupid enough to vote for Trump. I'll give you that, okay? All right? But don't be so stupid as to try and go with this whole, the election was fixed, the election was rigged. If there was ever a rigged election, it was the one that Trump won that the Russians meddled in on his behalf. Because the swamp wanted him out. Did, did, did you hear about the uh, the uh, Secretary of State of Texas who offered a million dollars to anybody in the in the country that could find fraud? And, Lieutenant uh, Governor. Lieutenant, yeah, Lieutenant Governor. Governor. And uh, the, the guy from Pennsylvania, the, the Secretary of State of Pennsylvania, Found, they found fraud there. There was five instances of fraud, and it was all Trump Trump voters fraudulently voting. And so now the guy wants the million dollars. <laughs> um, uh, and, he, and that, the guy actually paid twenty five thousand dollars to the dude that found the Trump voter that tried to vote twice. How come there are finding uh, that there are more v- uh, votes in many counties? than there are registered voters. That's Where are you getting true. this information, Phil? Fox? Yeah. Hannity? That's not true. It's nonsense. Not true. And if that was the case, Phil, they would have shown up look, under the look, Phil, they if you want to say if you want to if you want if you want to say to me, Phil, hold it a second. Phil, because if I'm talking, we can't hear you anyway. Okay. Um, the the point is is that I think that we have to admit that that elections have been rigged forever. I mean, just go back to New York in the 1800s and Tammany Hall and all the elections they rigged in this city alone. And when you talk about rigging elections, I'm sure that there was nothing but massive voter fraud in the South when they wouldn't let blacks vote, when they had poll taxes and things like that. To say that we've had a perfect election system yeah. in yeah. all these years is ridiculous. It's always been a big ruse that we have the right to vote. It, you know, we it, have an illusionary right to vote, but now we want to make it real, Phil. That's wanna, what we want to do. We want to make it real. We want to really have the right to vote. Yeah, I want to know if those people that were promised two chickens in every pot actually got them from Tippy Canoe. I got mine. I got mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, just Google the... Ru- the uh, the Hayes Tilden election in like eighteen. Oh, that was, was yeah, yeah. That was totally a scam. Yeah, you know? totally rigged. Yeah, you know, I mean, so I mean, the fact is that to say that oh, you know, we're we've been wonderful all these years and terrific, 
No. And so when Marjorie says to me, they're really trying to really screw with our ability to vote, I'm going, so what's new? You know, they've been doing this in various states for years. Ohio, it, it happens like crazy. The redistricting. Have you seen how these districts are uh, 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 portioned out? So they yeah. look, well, it looks a little like an appendix, but here it turns into a kidney, you know. I mean, they want to cram cram all the all the Democrats into one uh, district, so yeah. you know, and then so, have all, so they they get all the um, the House seats, even though you know maybe the the yeah. um, the Democrats will outvote them by like two to one. Yeah. They end up getting only one representative, and the other. But all I'm saying is, like I said to Marjorie, I mean, come on, it really, we aren't doing a great. We haven't ever done a great job in this country of having a really legal voting system, you know. By the way, calling in from uh, uh, Australia is our old friend Ross Manuel. Here he is. Uh, hi, Doc. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. By like two to one. Wait a minute. Oh, you got to turn off your audio. Turn off your audio. Uh, Jeff. Hmm? Ross is the new Jeff. <laughs> yeah. When, when did I become the new Jeff? What do you mean, the new Jeff? Background on. Oh, 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 well, so people do that. You know, it's a logical mistake. And and um, plus... Not everybody's perfect like Phil. I'm slowly getting to get, have my beard growing like, like Jeff's. You know, it's not a, I'm letting it grow yeah, out. It's looking better. It's really looking better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, of course, my eyes. Yeah. You can see, yeah. You can like Marty Feldman now. Yeah, exactly. So, how are you down there in uh, in uh, in Australia? What's what's new? Uh, everyone's open and free now. Oh, really? Yeah, and we have the most vaccinated population in the country, in the world. In the world, how? What percentage? Do you know? Ninety percent. Ah, good for you. Good. Wait for a minute. You. A month ago, nobody was getting the vaccine. Mm -hmm. now everybody's getting it. I started. Mm -hmm. It, 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 did there become any kind of backlash about people who didn't want to get vaccinated and, oh, it's my right not to get vaccinated? Uh, there was a little bit in Victoria uh, because they were like the most locked down state in the entirety of the world. Yeah. Uh, but even their lockdowns ended and they're 80% they're vaccinated. So, yeah. So good. Yeah, you know, the, poli the police force in there, there were some of the police force who didn't want to get back, you know, didn't want to get vaccinated. So that resulted in about 140 police being stood down. You know, a couple of nurses didn't want to get vaccinated, resulted in about 80 nurses getting stood down. So it's, you know, everything's more or less back to normal. Yeah. Well, There's a yeah, huge yeah. number of policemen in Chicago that don't want to get vaccinated. Uh, across the country. I, You know something? I, 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 To begin with, I don't understand this. If I were a cop, I would want to get vaccinated precisely because I'm having to deal every day with people spitting in my face and 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 having close proximity to me it's not because i want to protect other people you know it's because uh, uh i want to uh uh you know protect myself police paid for me to get uh hep b vaccination because i guess there was uh, uh you know the spittle and things when you come in contact mm -hmm. with uh some people they could spread uh hep b i think uh, by, uh, by their uh, spit. Yeah, but what does uh, this got to do with cops and COVID? Three shot. Yeah, uh, what does it have to do with cops and COVID, Phil? It's really got. Uh, it has to do with the fact is that he he had mandated vaccines when he was a cop. Yeah, it wasn't mandated. It was offered, and I could take advantage of it, which I hmm. did. Uh, but uh, and the city of Richmond paid for it. Do you think That's all good. cops, f f Phil? Do you think that all cops should be vaccinated? No. Why? Why? Choice. It's free. What do you mean it's choice? No, you don't have a choice. Not where the public welfare and health is concerned. I had a choice to get the Hep B vaccination. Yeah, but Hepatitis B doesn't kill people in large numbers. You know? Uh, no, he's, the, he's absolutely right. Got the yeah. freedom to decide. This is a you no, know, we got no, not no. in a public health situation. Not in a public health in, in that in, in that case, Phil. In that case, then the your employer has the right to not employ you, right? And, and they're doing that, and cops are resigning. That's the choice yeah. you make. There's consequences with freedom. Freedom right. 
Oh, this isn't freedom, freedom is Phil. Free. This is not like let's go fight wars over something. Come on, this is something that we're doing for our the benefit of our country and the health and the welfare of everybody in it. I think that the reason that they're doing it is because they're being forced to do it. And no, people... I wasn't forced to do it. Yes, uh, Jack Bishop is here. Hey, uh, Phil, were you forced to get a vaccination when you started school? I don't know. You don't know? Unbelievable. Now you're now you're don't lie. Don't lie to me if you're going to lie to yourself. I don't know. I was four or five years old. Oh, all right. How much? Did you, listen, well, we can tell you you were. In no time in the in in the last, you but, know, I, you know, you and I are around the same age. In no time since the forties, in most urban areas, those are big cities for folks that don't understand that word. Could you start school without some sort of vaccination for at least smallpox, and usually for a couple of other things? Don't you have that little scar on your, on your uh, arm, Phil? I wasn't given the choice of vaccination. Oh, if boy, I, Phil, But Phil, no, your Phil. parents weren't given the choice. My parents took... Your parents were not given the choice. Wait a minute, it wait, was wait a minute. Mandated oh, let, let, me, let, me, let me, let me, Jack, let me say something here. Uh, if, I, if, if, some, if you don't get vaccinated and then you come and blow in my face and I get it, okay... Uh, I didn't volunteer to get COVID, but you gave it to me. You got vaccinated. Well, you know? that doesn't mean anything. There's breakthroughs vac uh, with the vaccinations. There's some people who have died who were vaccinated. Look at Colin Powell. Well, Colin Powell was a slightly different situation. There were other well, mitigating factors there that it had they yeah, not but been. He, but he was fully vaccinated. Though. He was fully vaccinated. But I mean, you know, you don't have the right to impinge on my health. You know. Well, you know, it's there. You're, you're uh, going to find a hard place to try and make an argument here. Uh, well, you see, I went to a restaurant the other night. Uh, actually, it was Ruth's Chris. Yeah. But, uh, they make. By the way, do you get some like a break in price there because you mention them so often on this program? <laughs> Well, we could go in. We had to show our ID, and we had to show our vaccination card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's normal. Mm -hmm. But aren't they violating your rights by forcing you to do that? No, because uh, I don't have to go there. I can go to Fleming's. Mm -hmm. you know? What if Fleming says the same thing? Well, if they do, then I he guess goes I'll... back to Jack in the Box. Yeah, or gets a Whopper. <laughs> I have to go to Tad's. Yeah, yeah, Tad's oh, they're, Steakhouse. They're dads. Uh, so, yeah, so, so, so wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second, uh, Jack. So, uh, um, um, Ross, uh, is this kind of idiocy running rampant in Australia, or has this kind of dialogue been kind yeah, of muted? You're going to need to get me more specific. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are there many fills in no. Australia saying, hey, it's my right not to get vaccinated? No, that's because um, the same kind of yeah. right. Uh, let, let him finish, Phil, please. Yes, what? Uh, no, only reason why there isn't a lot of those is because Australia's understanding of freedom isn't as militarized as the United States as our idea of freedom. Uh, we still we still believe in you know responsibility things like that. So it's our civil responsibility to get vaccinated in order to protect oh, the community as a whole. Okay. How about how about that, Phil? Civil responsibility. Well, you know, when people are asked to stand up uh, to do the right thing, they usually do. Look during World War II, how many people uh, volunteered to go uh, and, and fight uh, in the war? Uh, not because they had to. Yeah. They wanted to. And, and, and here in this country... Here in this country, Phil, Phil, here in this country, uh, during the earlier part of the last century, uh, people were volunteering to lynch people. You know, there's a lot of volunteerism going on. I would, I would point out that the United States has had a draft for every major conflict that the world has been involved in. Australia has not. And yet we have committed troops in every single armed conflict since we were a country in 1901. So, so uh, Jeff, you want to All say All our something? troops are volunteers. Jeff, uh, yeah, Jeff. Unmute, Jeff. Turn your mic on, Jeff. Unmuted, Jeff. 
Can't no, read. No, he's not. Yeah, yep. he, yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, okay. How am I now? Good. Yeah, fine. Can you hear me now? Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, I've been to Australia, and I had to take. There was a medication that I used to have to take all the time with a, a needle and all of that. It's called heroin. And, I was just gonna say. <laughs> no, no, it's was, it was like, anyway, 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 it was something you needed to you get take. that vein up. Right. So anyway, I go there and I don't know where to go. You know, so I say, do I talk to a doctor? What do I do? He says, just go to the hospital. Tell them what you got to do. I go to the hospital. They give me the injection. That's it. They they took care of everyone in that country very well. Well, I think there's a larger sense of the well-being of everybody. Am I right about yes. that, Ross? I mean, the, yeah. the, uh, yeah. the, uh, the best public service you can perform is by being a good citizen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take care of the aborigines. I mean, we, 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 you take care of you Native Americans first. Hey, no, no, no. It's not a whataboutism. I'm asking. No, no, no. Yeah. The aborigines. Do they? In regards to, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Phil, Mr. Fad, I just had a good what is, what is the state, let me ask you this then. What is the status these days of aborigines in Australia? Are they... They're the same as everyone else. Okay. Uh, well, Phil, you, you've, have you ever been to Australia, Phil? Phil? Phil, I actually missed the start of your question, so I can't actually answer it. So what, what we was all the question? missed it. He was asking about the aborigines. What about the aborigines? He doesn't like what about isms, but then he said, "What about the aborigines?" Not what about? I'm not. Uh, but I'm, I'm saying that if everything is so beautiful in Australia, how are they treating the aborigines? You know, it, it, uh, I think that you got rose-colored glasses. Well, wait on. a minute. Hold on a second. You let Ross answer that question. I will admit that the, the historical treatment of indigenous persons in this country is about on par as most other white countries' uh, treatment of indigenous persons in their country. Uh, but we have been making great steps in trying to improve conditions. Um, we are trying you know, greatly to improve the health outcomes of Indigenous persons, welfare for education, uplifting programs. Mm -hmm. um, there are a number of in, you know, Indigenous-based initiatives to improve uh, education and employment opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say that we're perfect at it, but we're also not denying that it is a problem. Okay. Well, that, you know, my point is that every country has issues mm -hmm. and uh, every country has. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Is Ours that is called Republicans. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, you know, the issues that we have existed before and we can't judge people based on what was the norm you're doing a lot no, of what about we can, we can judge people on their choices phil and your choice is hooray for me and screw society let oh, me let me ask you this question uh, 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 ross in, in in australia phil when i'm when i'm talking they can't hear you okay uh, uh, but uh ross down in australia because you got to get that whole system of yours fixed but uh um in australia how many parties are there? Uh, 17, at last count. 17 parties. And how many of those would you say have a fighting chance to win? Four. Four. Okay. We only have two in this country. That's how, why what kind, uh, if you want to talk about elections being rigged, only two. The Republicans two. stand no chance. Huh? And the Republicans stand no chance. Oh, yes, they do. Because I mean, it, we have like the same I know, I kind we of political parties. What, what, wait, what, I mean, what were you saying, Ross? So, we have the same kind of political parties in the United States. So we have our conservative party, which is currently in power at the moment, and our Democrat equivalent party. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, they're the two main parties. Then there's the Green Party, which you know is environmentalism. Then we have uh, like fringe parties and independents who form the basis. They're more uh, like single single focus parties so like gun reform and hunting and fishing and things like that we have parties for those do you have the parties do have, like do you have the parties like they have a monty python like the very silly party yeah we do we do, we do. <laughs> okay. yeah but they never get any votes so yeah. yeah yeah um but because we use preferential voting so basically every every party preference is another party so if they don't get enough votes their votes go to someone else yeah 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> what happens is, yeah. Hmm? I, I just what happens ask, is that the animal, oh, sorry, Alan. Go, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Let Ross just finish the, his thought. So, so basically what happens is that there's usually only three parties that really form the form government. It's the, what we call the Labour Party, mm -hmm. The, so the Workers' Party, mm -hmm. uh, the Liberal National Coalition, that's a Republican, mm -hmm. and the Greens okay. are the main contenders to the parties. Okay. What were you going to say, uh, Alan? What, what do Australians think of Trump? <laughs> um, we laughed relentlessly when we found out he was president. So did we. How about that? <laughs> and then, then then we started crying well, where I work because that means because I work in a public public building I realized that at some point if you ever came here I'd have to facilitate him and yeah. I'm like Ugh, or oh not. God. what do you mean facilitate him I work in ceremonial duties so we had to, when heads of state come to Australia they come to where I work oh I see okay all mm. right so you know I don't think he ever went to Australia during he never time. did he never did no. yeah you're very mm -hmm. lucky you know, only sitting, only sitting yeah. president since Truman to have never actually visit Australia. Jack, you got anything to say here? Huh? Oh, wait a minute. Let me wake up here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to ask Phil this. Do you feel that we all have a responsibility to the other people in our societies? Absolutely. Yes. So, we have a responsibility to the other people in our societies and other societies. But that's how I feel. Uh, Vernon likes to say that I am because I vote uh, in, in one fashion that uh, my my vote is for uh, uh, to, to put other people down. But that's not how I feel. And that's not how I vote. Is that what so you're right saying? Now, at the moment, so right now, at the moment, are you proud of the conservative element in America and what they're doing? I am proud that people can make their own decisions. No, no, Phil, that's not the question that was asked. Answer his question. Just because I don't agree uh, and I, I chose a different path doesn't mean that other people have to choose the same path. I'm not saying that. Are you proud? That's what you say. Of, are you proud of what used to be called all the conservative party in America and the choices that they are representing. I don't really, I am fiscally conservative, but I, I tend to be more uh, like uh, more leaning towards John Birch society rather than the Republican party. Jeez. Do you even know what the John Birch society was? It doesn't even really exist anymore. Remember. You remember? He's got a card. He's got a membership card. Absolutely. <laughs> what, what, yeah. What, what, what's the number on it? One. Horrible racist. Phil, the John Birch Society was a horrible racist. They were anti-Semitic, Phil. Yes. Yeah. They were anti-Semitic. They, they, they were. They were demonizing the United Nations for you know. Fifty-eight. They uh, had a reading list that contained. <sighs> Uh, the the articles of Zion. What, what, what is the uh, protocols of the protocols elders of, of Zion. Zion? That's right, Zion. Now, uh, if you look at uh, the Arab countries and the Palestinians, they mm -hmm. also believe in the articles of Zion, and they're pushing that. Now, as a as a person that wants to be educated about things, I think I should know what these other people are saying. And okay, I, I let, let's go back to an old question, Phil. Was Earl, what, did, you, did you consider Earl Warren a communist? Earl, oh, the uh, Supreme Court justice? Yeah. I like Earl Warren. No. You, did, I know, uh, you didn't like him. That's not the question I asked you. Did you consider him a communist? Uh, I don't know that he, he was a communist or not, but he was definitely... Well, well, the, well, you should know because the John Birch Society says he was. I can't read everything, but he probably was. Yeah, and so was Edward House. And so, so, what, so what does a communist mean to you? What do you define as a communist? It's Me. <laughs> <laughs> Good line, Alex. So, so, no, tell me, what do you see a communist being for? Uh, I see them being the elitists that want to control uh, uh, the, the government so that everyone else works for them. Well, well what about... In other words, Mitch McConnell. And Donald Trump. Yeah, what about down here in Texas when we got a, a, a cockamamie governor that wants to tell women what they can do with their bodies? 
I, I think that it's important to protect the unborn. Well, the I unborn wish, should not be able to vote. About the protect. unborn have no rights, Phil. Well, that's that's in your to opinion. begin with. To begin but, with, no. uh, judging judging life Legally. by uh, judge, judging life by a heartbeat is not what we judge life by. We judge it by brain activity. You judge it. No, by brain. no. When a doctor oh. says this person can't live, that only their heart is going, their their brain dead. They generally consider them dead when the brain is dead. They're brain dead. They decide whether they're going to pull the plug or not. But uh, they don't consider yeah, Phil, them dead. If Phil, they were, Phil, I'm just telling you, the heartbeat does not determine whether you're alive or not. It just. If a heartbeat means conception, does that mean that I can take out life insurance on a fetus? Yes, yes, you can. And and does that mean uh, that I can stop? I can I can stop being charged for child support? Yeah. Yes. Does that mean that I can that in the event of an action that I can, someone can get charged with manslaughter if my if my unborn child is killed? Yes. yes. Then why haven't those laws been enacted yet? Well, they are. Why only really in regards no, to the yeah, They are. <laughs> Why don't you tell Ross about uh, the fact that if you are in a traffic accident and you, let's say, you're a drunk driver and you kill a pregnant mother, you're you're charged with two deaths: the child and the mother. In some states. In most it's not states. Universal. It, it depends on how it's far. It's not along universal, the Phil. Is. There's there's a a limit to where you know that the the, the the fetus can survive on its own and it's i think it's like 16 22 weeks 22 weeks. yeah i my my argument is if it can survive outside the mother's body then it is a uh, human life okay yeah. uh and that doesn't come until about 16 weeks in up until that point it's a it's a zygote and then it's a you know it's a little slightly bigger than that and you that know means technically tapeworms have rights where yes, people, tape worms only have Only in the Republican Party. I grew up in a time where people were uh, dehumanized. They were called zipper heads and uh, and uh, uh, kikes and and uh, other other things to dehumanize they them. They were called talk show hosts too. <laughs> you're effort at dehumanizing. Yeah, but you're talking about the John Birch Society that was doing those the things. John Birch Society kind of deals with a lot of conspiracy, yeah. but. Uh, on Phil, on the Phil, the John Birch Society is anti-Semitic. Has always been known as being anti-Semitic, and has been singled out as being anti-Semitic. I have a friend, Glenn. Glenn is uh, J Jewish beyond Jewish, mm -hmm. and he also belongs to the John Birch. Well, then Society. he's a fucking moron. Yeah. Um, no, the issue not. with outlawing abortions is it's going to result in numbers of women being killed by. Any other by other means, you know, abortion yeah. having having regulated abortions are a safe, effective procedure. By making them illegal means that there will be women who will take their own lives or will be killed in trying to deal with that illegally. And by the way, let me just say one last thing because we're running out of time here. I know you've got to get going here, Jack. Thank God. So, uh, you know, but uh, uh, the thing that I, I think is important to know is that we are at a point here. With, a, with abortion, where, for instance, Planned Parenthood in many areas is having to close down. And Planned Parenthood abortions are only a small part of what they do, very minor. The yeah. rest of what they do is women's reproductive health and welfare and so on. Mammograms. And, huh? Mammograms, mammograms, things like that. And women are yes. not getting those mammograms because people like the governor of Texas, who thank God is in a wheelchair and somebody has the ability to roll them in front of a car sometime soon. Yeah, but, baby, I'm for you know, it. I'll yeah. pay to see that. Hey, yeah. just um, not to change oh, the subject, I, I gotta, but breaking news here. Yeah. Alec Baldwin shot somebody on the set of a movie, killed the person, and injured another person on a film set. Yeah, two people. Was yeah. it an accident? Yeah, it must have been. I was on accident. a film set. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, hey, listen, uh, uh, Jack. Jack's got to go. I got to go. Uh, okay. I want to uh, uh, always thank. We always like having you, Ross. Uh, you're always an intelligent sort to have on this panel. Uh, so is Alan. So is our uh, old friend uh, 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 up here, uh, uh, John Larkin. Uh, Jeff Stein, Alan. thank you so much for being with us, Phil. Note for Alan. Thank Note you. for Alan. 
What? Google the zone of death, Yellowstone, and read up, read about it. Okay? All right, thank you. Okay. Interesting read. Uh, that's, Thanks, where, that's where we can all take Phil on a vacation. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Phil. I really I do appreciate the call tonight. Vernon, um, <laughs> of course, thank you, and thank you to Jack Bishop. Uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye <laughs> at you. Okay, there they go. Okay, you're probably going to see me yeah, kind of out of sync here. Let me just get rid of them, and then I will get back in sync as soon as I don't have the... Uh, the zoom going any longer and slowly i will just slowly get back into sync come on come on faster 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 i want to get back into sync before the show is over anyway that's it for tonight we'll see you again tomorrow night jack bishop is next with the intersection give him a call and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night 10 30 same time same station in life in the meantime if you see her Tell her I love her. And, and by the way, uh, uh, get a vaccination if you haven't had one. And uh, wear a mask if you haven't been vaccinated. Bye-bye, everybody.